Good afternoon and welcome to Carnegie for our City Council informational meeting. Today's date is Tuesday, January 28th. We welcome everybody to Carnegie and those that may be watching on CityLink and, or on the internet for that matter. We have a few agenda items today, uh, reports and so on, presentations. We'll start today with uh, Jim David, our Legislative and Operations Manager for the City Council. Good afternoon, Jim David, City Council staff. A proposal allowing local government's ability to restrict carrier licenses is officially Senate Bill 91. The sponsors are bipartisan and the Municipal League does not expect opposition from alcohol interests or from the Department of Revenue that administers a $100 license. The bill is currently awaiting its first reading on the Senate floor. House Bill, or this morning, the House Local Government Committee considered House Bill 1066 that would allow firearms in a courthouse and state capital as long as the individual had a concealed weapons permit. The bill was amended in committee to allow only elected officials with a concealed permit, uh, but the Municipal League did take the opportunity to point out during testimony that the city buildings are not afforded the same protections as the capital or the courthouses across South Dakota. The bill was approved, though, eight to five in its amended form. And finally, the Municipal League has taken the lead on House Bill 1104, which would allow cities, counties, and, or excuse me, cities, schools, and counties the option of requiring its vendors to receive payments electronically. Our finance department is very supportive of this measure and points out that paying by check is 13 times more expensive than paying electronically. This is awaiting a hearing in the House Commerce Committee. I'd be happy to answer uh, any of your questions. Questions for Jim. Thank you very much, Thank Jim. You. Keep an eye on what's going on in here for us. Thank you. Um, today we have a report from Councillor Rolfing on the Land Use Committee meeting from last Tuesday. Yes, uh, the Land Use Committee met last Tuesday, the 21st. We we talked about two, uh, two items. The first was the Prairie Meadows annexation. And um, we're going to, um, well, they've got some things to work out. And we've asked Tracy and, and the finance department to work out some uh, uh, details of the possible financing of those, um, that annexation to the uh, homeowners in that and property owners in that area. So we'll be looking forward to getting that back and uh, working with them to get them, you know, on a friendly basis uh, annexed into the city. Second was the um, uh, TIF, um, a little information about the TIF and how, um, how not necessarily how it works, but the new uh, <clears throat> protocol that we have uh, to do the TIFs. And uh, uh, Darren was here to do that, and we, uh, we went through that, and uh, things are going to be coming to the council for discussion. So those are the two items we looked at. I know most everybody was here. Com questions for Councilor Rolfing on either of these items or land use committee. Okay. We'll proceed then to our city council open discussion. Councilors, anything you'd like to bring to the rest of the council? Councilor Jameson. Just a brief update on my uh, testimony at the NPR last Wednesday morning, the transportation committee. Uh, they kind of work in an order of uh, uh, county, township, in municipalities and how we testified. And uh, everyone in front of me, I was with the municipalities, of course, everyone in front of me uh, was worried about their funding, uh, their roads are turning to gravel, bridges that weren't safe to pass anymore, and were uh, essentially uh, begging for help. And, uh, and then, of course, I get up there <clears throat> and I thank them for their help and their support. And uh, that was a nice moment for us. They were very interested in the uh, adaptive traffic signals, the smart road stuff. They really wanted to know about that. As you know, a lot of the uh, roads are funded through that gas tax. And with those adaptive lights, it's meant to really reduce the amount of gas that you need to travel through the cities. So it's like I mentioned to them that it's part of our mission to uh, reduce the amount of taxes we're paying on gas and less gas so they should consider finding another source to generate revenue because we're doing our best to eliminate some of it. Uh, 
Lots of good discussion though. Uh, they were receptive and thankful. We talked about the railroad relocation project and their support and help getting that done for the city of Sioux Falls. Uh, the nearly $50 million of support that they've given the city last year in funding and how that investment will pay off for them in the future. Um, anyways, good meeting. Uh, it's cold up there in Pierre uh, as it was here, but uh, I think it went very well. Thank you, Councillor Jameson. Any questions? Did they, um, Councillor, did they mention anything about Highway 100? And <clears throat> I did. I brought it up uh, as a the major investment from them and that the return that the city will receive and then and then in return the sales tax dollars that they should receive. It's a great investment for them, a great investment for us. So, yes, we did cover it. Any other open discussion? I have one item if nobody else has anything. I'm, a few weeks ago, I was contacted by four or six graders of the class of Sherry Alvey at Edison Middle School. They were doing a science project, and they reached out to me through email, and I ended up meeting with them last week. Their names were Armin Derhagopian, Josh Anderson, Spencer Wasmond, and Eli Moore, um, four very nice young gentlemen, and they were doing a science project on natural gas and the use in vehicles and the pollution-free aspects of it. And, the natural reoccurrence of the product and that type of thing. And they they're, they were assigned as part of their project to meet with an elected official to discuss it. So it had a very nice um, discussion. And in the process of that, I found out that starting in 2014, Ford has started manufacturing a truck uh, specifically with natural gas engine. So maybe that's something we could see on our roads here in Sioux Falls. We have a great abundance of that resource, especially in this area and in this country, and uh, the fact that it is a clean burning fuel, I appreciate them bringing that to me and being able to discuss that with them. And like I said, maybe someday we can see some natural gas Ford trucks on our streets that say City of Sioux Falls on them. So um, just wanted to let everybody know about that. Anything else? All righty, our presentation today is on the Event Center project update, and it looked like Mr. Cotter is gonna be taking the lead on that. Welcome, Mark. All right, uh, thank you, Council Chair and Council Members. Uh, it's our pleasure to come and give you another update on the construction of the new Event Center. I know most of you were recently out there, and we were happy that you attended, um, give you a really good insight on, on where the project's at, so. Um, I will start today. We've got a number of people that will give you your um, update. But it's just nice to see, as you see the main image that's been reflective on, on these updates now, uh, we're on the 470th construction day of this new facility. And it's really taking shape. Uh, the, in, the building's enclosed, the roof is on, and really a, an extensive amount of work is happening uh, to the inside of the building. <clears throat> All right, um, the biggest highlight that we have to share this last um, update is the installation of the new ice floor. Um, two of the main benchmarks that they have to hit is floor flatness and floor levelness. Um, we, we establish specs uh, to make sure that you can have a very uh, even, consistent uh, thickness of ice for either the figure skaters or players to play on, and the contractor exceeded both those specs. Um, we're extremely thrilled, Mortensen is thrilled, and, and so is the building operator, Terry Torkelson, and his team. It just makes uh, delivering those uh, events so much better. Um, and we do, um, our partner on this project is VVI. They're a local uh, video firm. They're, they're, the, they're the consultant that actually has the, um, the, the cameras up in the sky and inside, and they've got a short video clip here. Um, that nets out the construction of the new ice floor. So let's play that. That's the heating system that goes in and is covered with sand. Then there's a vapor barrier insulation. the cooling pipes go in. This is 
series of GoPro cameras were put up to do the time lapse video, placing the concrete floor. Both Simcoe, which is in charge of delivering the floor, the uh, specialist from Indiana that came in with the laser screeds, and Pesca uh, said they'd never seen a, a floor go this well, uh, and we're extremely thrilled. Nice net out of a major activity. Nothing to it. <laughs> Mortensen uh, got us prepared. One of the second um, biggest milestones to get past, past the trusses, was pouring the floor. Uh, and, and the trusses went well, the floor went well, and, and now we're still in that curing time um, so we can actually ultimately get on the floor and, and start building things above it. Um, we're in about 18 days of the 28-day cure. After that gets cured, um, the entire floor will be covered with plywood. Dactronics will come in. They'll start to install the ribbon board um, and also start to build the truss system that will hang that uh, large center hung scoreboard. Will you advance for me? All right. Uh, a number of interior finishes are going in. Um, one of the nice things uh, about this project is is Mortensen early on, um, we had a discussion about doing a number of mock-ups first to make sure that um, we, had a, we had a chance to, to look at things, make changes. Uh, this, this, is a, this is the inside of one of the suites. We had a mock-up of the suite done probably three months ago. Uh, we made a series of changes and then ultimately now, now just with the volume of suite work that we have to do, now the cabinet manufacturer can come in and, and do them all and, and they're not seeing any changes. That's, the, that's really the power of doing mock-ups. So you can see the carpets going in and the cabinetry work is going in on that level. Next slide. This is, um, again, the concessions are starting to take shape. You can see the subway tile in the background and then a number of the uh, fixtures that will go in. This is also a mock-up, um, but ultimately it's being done to a level that uh, we don't expect uh, to take it out. Uh, we expect this to be a finished product, but it does give us a chance to really go into the first one, make any changes, and then replicate it. As you go around the 360 degree bowl, it essentially just repeats concessions, bathrooms, concessions, bathrooms, and so it's important to really get it right the first time and then uh, ultimately start to build them out. Next slide. Um, the other day, Mortensen had shared that there was 60 sheet rockers in the facility. Uh, this is some sheet rock work that you can see up, up near the loge boxes. Again, loge boxes are essentially unwalled suites. Um, and um, you've heard in the past from Darren Smith, all the loge boxes on this, uh, in this facility are sold out uh, when they went to market in a very short time. And, and you're starting to see as you go through the facility, um, a lot of sheet, work, sheet rock gets done when there's 60 individuals putting up sheet rock uh, on a full-time basis. So it's really starting to take shape. Next slide. Uh, this, is, uh, one of the very, well, this is one of the key packages, the video package uh, from Dactronics. It was made right here in Sioux Falls. Uh, it's a large video display that'll be right above the main entrance that can really be used by SMG to market um, uh, current events and upcoming events. And, and again, just like uh, a number of the interior finishes are starting to happen, uh, same with on the outside, the building is really starting to take shape. All right, uh, some very distinguished people in that uh, photo. I'm sure you'll recognize them. Uh, some upcoming activities that we'll talk about in our next update. Uh, again, we're just doing a number of interior finishes, starting to move into painting the ceilings and then putting up the clouds. Um, a lot of wall tile, a lot of floor tile going in the bathrooms. Um, the seats will start to go in the upper concourse in February. And then um, once the ice floor uh, gets fully cured, Dactronics will move in. They'll start to install the ribbon board and, and center hung scoreboard. We are planning to do some sneak peek uh, tours. Uh, Terry Torkelson's team has graciously agreed to facilitate these. And we really want to get uh, the community a uh, chance to get inside the building and see this. this is a, really a once in a lifetime opportunity to see a building of this uh, size and scale go up. 
And so on the, uh, on the connection to the convention center, um, people that come on Saturdays from 1 to 4, or um, I'm sorry, Saturdays from 6 to 8 p.m. or Sundays from 1 to 4 are going to be able to come in to that uh, east end and really just look in, see the whole sides and uh, scope of the building. And so we're really trying to uh, get the word out so people can see uh, in this facility the sneak peeks. Be, uh, we'll be sending out more information to uh, do that. It'll start on February 8th, and then they will uh, end at the end of March. Next slide. My last slide, I just wanted to give you a sense of uh, just the, the amount of uh, effort that goes into inspecting all this construction. You know, there was a time when, uh, at times, there's over 200 tradespeople in this building uh, building this facility. As you've seen, you know, we've got, we've got all types of work happening from still pouring concrete up to uh, hanging lighting. And so it's put, a, it's put a significant demand on the inspection work from building services. And we just wanted to highlight their work. There's been 355 separate building, electrical, plumbing, and mechanical inspections done to date. Uh, and if you net that out on how many days on site, there's been 34 days spent to ensure that uh, the specifications are being met um, and that we have a very good, uh, well-built, safe building. All right, next is uh, Darren Smith, and he will give you his update. Darren. Mark, thank you. Good afternoon. Darren Smith, Director of Community Development. Uh, I have shown this slide uh, consistently over the last uh, several presentations, but or updates, uh, but I like to do that because uh, while all of you have seen it, I know there are people watching at home and others that are new in the audience each time, uh, and to give them a sense of where we've been and where we're going um, with this effort. So again, as, as again you all know, uh, the naming rights have been secured at Denny Sanford Premier Center. Uh, the luxury suites are sold out, the loge boxes are sold out, and we're engaged very actively now in sponsorship sales and then club seat sales. Uh, will be later this year. In terms of sponsorship uh, sales, so it's a nice segue to that. Uh, again, as, as each of you know, uh, we've announced three signature partners already, Mid-Continent Communications, Pepsi, and most recently, Kelloland TV. Uh, but we do have uh, approximately a half dozen other sponsorship deals that are very advanced. Uh, in fact, uh, if you've been following your email and, and the media a little bit today, you know that we'll have our next announcement tomorrow to announce um, our pizza uh, sponsor and partner. Uh, and so you're all invited out for that. And yes, of course, there's free, free samples, uh, including um, the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say for the first time, uh, anywhere tomorrow they are uh, launching a new product. Um, for the first time anywhere tomorrow. And, and at that point, I'm not gonna say, because I'll slip up and say something here, but, so there's a, a, exciting things involved with, uh, with the announcement tomorrow, and you're all invited to that. It's at 1.30 at the convention center in the lobby. Uh, one thing I did wanna mention with these sponsorships, uh, as you know, you, uh, the city council approved a new naming rights ordinance uh, for public facilities, both inside and out, and uh, also that applies to streets and parks and those types of things. So I did just want to give you a heads up that with some of these sponsorship deals where there is the naming of a physical area or space in a public facility, those will be coming to you in the near future uh, in the form of an application, and um, we will try and do those in groups as, as we have those. So again, just, just a heads up that you will start to see those in the coming months. Um, and then finally, club seat sales. I did mention earlier that uh, we would anticipate those going on sale later this year, and right now, uh, more specifically, we're looking at late spring or, or early summer. And with that, I will welcome uh, Tracy Turback. Thank you, Darren. Good afternoon. Last, uh, last update, we added a slide on the uh, operations of the facility, and uh, so we're going to continue that again this time around. Um, as you folks know, spring is a, a very busy time uh, for the facilities that we have, and uh, uh, this year is certainly no exception with the 
uh, athletic uh, tournaments coming up uh, soon. Some of the, the trade shows, the larger trade shows and expos and, and other activities are, are coming up. So SMG has been uh, incredibly busy preparing uh, for those major events uh, coming up in our facilities and uh, is obviously looking forward to uh, incorporating many of those activities into our new facility a year from now uh, when they come around again. Uh, an important announcement was made uh, last uh, last month, about mid-December. Uh, the uh, I think came as no no surprise, uh, uh, very little surprise to anyone in terms of the the announcement of the Stampede hockey team uh, has uh, agreed uh, with SMG to a lease, and uh, they will be playing their their game starting uh, this fall in the in the new facility. So that's uh, another key piece of the puzzle that's uh, come into. Uh, fallen into place and and uh, again is a, uh, an important uh, milestone I think for the uh, future operations of the facility. Uh, over the next six to eight months uh, SMG will be ramping up their staffing in anticipation of opening the event center. Uh, one key step in that process uh, they have uh, agreed to terms with a, an assistant general manager an individual that will fill that role uh, sometime around mid-February uh, so Terry will finally get some get some uh, assistance to uh, back him up on a lot of the activities coming forward, and then as I say, over the next uh, months to come, there'll be additional staff brought on board uh, as we work toward the eventual opening of the facility this fall and, and turning it over entirely to uh, from Mortensen Construction to SMG as the operators. Uh, another important thing, uh, exciting thing that's going to happen next month, uh, sometime around the middle of February. Uh, SMG will be launching a new uh, website for the Denny Sanford Premier Center. So we're looking, looking forward to that as well. It uh, will be a, a key piece of their marketing and, and promotional package. And our last slide today, uh, as, as it has been, is the financial summary through the end of 2013. Uh, of course, the, the funding has not changed. You'll recall that earlier this month, you folks uh, formally appropriated the $2 million that was donated uh, by Sanford for facility enhancements. Uh, project expenditures are now uh, just under $70 million through the end of December. Uh, it's up about $10 million since uh, the last report two months ago, and that's about the pace we've been running uh, in regard to the, uh, the construction primarily driving that number. So that leaves a little over $48 million uh, yet to be spent. So the, uh, a lot of, lot of uh, activity yet to take place on the project, and uh, Certainly that will be reflected over the next updates uh, on the financial uh, report as well. One thing I'll point out on this is that uh, we've added a line under project expenditures. Uh, this this uh, update for furniture fixtures and equipment, uh, that's something that will be a big uh, push over the, the next six months or so to, uh, to acquire all of the uh, uh, furniture and fixtures and equipment that are, are the, the movable kind of things. I think Mark has described it that if you pick up could pick up the building and shake it when it's done, all the things that would fall out would come into that category of furniture, fixtures, and equipment. And they're just uh, a long, long list of items that need to be procured. And, and so that'll be a, a major effort over the next uh, months to come. So with that, uh, that concludes our report. We'll be back uh, in a couple of months again for the next update. But for now, we'll stand by for any questions you folks have. Thank you. Questions from the counselors? <coughs> Councillor Aguilar. I have a couple questions. Um, are we presently in negotiation with the storm? <clears throat> I, can, uh, I can feel that, although I will say Terry Torkelson is here. Uh, so if you've got uh, uh, any operations questions that, that I, I can't handle, I'll, I'll turn to him. But uh, they, have, uh, they have had some discussions right now that's uh, um, a deal has not been reached, and uh, I, I'm sure Terry would be reticent to discuss any details of uh, whatever discussions they have had, but uh, that's certainly an anticipated agreement that I expect to be forthcoming in, in the uh, months to come, but uh, at this point, there is no, no formal agreement. Okay, thank you. Could I ask one more? Councilor Eckler. Um, this one, I believe, would be for Darren. Um, club seats. Do we have an approximate number, and why are they being sold last? We do not have an exact number yet. Uh, we will be working very closely with uh, Legends and SMG Innovations to determine what the exact number will be. 
uh, the pricing and, and all of the amenities that will go with it. Um, uh, the, uh, the club seats and other projects, that is a logical sequence as far as suites and loge boxes and then club seats last. Uh, that, that is how most of them do it if they have all three of those types of premium seating products as we will. And then lastly, I would say the timing as far as when we will choose, again, in partnership with all those groups I mentioned is uh, we'll work very closely with SMG. It'll be important in terms of the timing of announcement, uh, announcing uh, those first events and so forth. Uh, we'll need to time it very carefully with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Garen, stay there. Councillor Rolfing. Garen. Um, the uh, sponsorships, uh, Mid-Continent, Pepsi, uh, Kelloland, um, to what extent did, um, have you been working with Legend on that, or is that entirely theirs? Yeah, it's, uh, that's a good question. Um, Legends is always the direct contact. Uh, we are never in the room, city officials are never in the room negotiating these with the sponsors, prospects, or others that are advanced. We have a very good communication system in place. Uh, we speak almost daily. Uh, we have weekly conference calls set up with a number of uh, those of us in the, the city that are involved, SMG ovations as well. And, um, you know, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of interests that are involved in that and making sure we do the right thing for the city long term always. Uh, so that's, that's where we ultimately always have the final say, but uh, that's how it's handled. Great. Yeah. Councillor Jameson. Thank you, uh, Darren, and uh, one for Mark maybe, but on the, uh, Darren, you brought it up, the uh, sponsorship update part, mm -hmm. including those pieces in the presentation time and time again, because yep. it's important for the public to know. Uh, I just had a note here that the amounts. Yeah. I think it'd be great for us to know the dollar amounts of each of those items. Every time you come forward, just for that same very purpose you brought up, yep. it's just great information for the public to have. Sure. Um, you know, with all the sponsorships, even the Mid-Continent and mm -hmm. Pizza One to Come and yeah. all those, I think yeah. that'd just be helpful. Certainly. If possible. And then as well for uh, Mark, uh, I think you would be the guy on this part, but for all the, uh, the sponsorship and the local impact of this project were two of the big pieces of getting this approved and, and done. The dollar amount that locally is spent in our community I think that's a great number we should share somehow. If you, I think you talked about it last time a little bit, but that's a great big number. Mm -hmm. And it should be in this presentation every time you guys come forward, just for the same reason Darren brought up that time and time again, we gotta let the public know that this building's impacting a lot of people in our city mm -hmm. and, and just to what, expen what extent. So I would encourage you to include that number as well. Okay. Uh, and I know we talked to, uh, I know we've, we've always talked that our, our goal is to always to hit 85%. We've maintained that. Um, I know in the past I've told you that we've had essentially two packages left. Uh, we've recently opened the landscape bid, which that will be going to a local contractor, and then also interior signage. And so we've now essentially let every package for the building. Um, Tracy had talked about that's for the physical capital piece of it. And now we're starting to go through the furniture, fixtures, and equipment, and we're still trying to um, tailor even that type of work to go to uh, local vendors. And so, again, as you look at the full scope, uh, that $99 million to build a building um, and still hitting that 85%, that's that 85 plus million uh, that's truly happening right here in Sioux Falls. And, and uh, it has really been... Uh, uh, you know, very rewarding uh, to to not only go out and and share with the public this is our intent, and then to get a partner like Mortensen and truly carry it out time and time again with the bid packages, uh, and then and then on the f and then on the backside to hear Mortensen uh, communicate the capacity of our local contractors, whether it's Tessiers, Muth, Pesca, Concrete Materials. Uh, you name it, this, uh, the list continues to get long and long, longer and longer, and they're all names that we all know very well. So um, we're extremely pleased. Um, and again, that 85% number has been our target, and, and it's been nice that we've been able to exceed it. Thanks. 
Councilor Staggers. Yeah, Mark, uh, if I could ask you a quick question. As we're proceeding along with the construction of the uh, event center, uh, just for clarification, can you tell me exactly, well, I shouldn't say exactly, but how many people are we going to be able to accommodate for concerts and things like that? And also, you know, we in the past have talked about expanding it in the future, maybe to, you know, 15,000 or something. Is that still in the cards or not? Yes. Um, so essentially, um, way back when we started this project, uh, we said that we wanted to achieve 12,000 seats for a basketball setup. I think one of the, um, one of the interesting um, parts of this discussion is you can, you can change the building in so many different configurations that I can't just tell you it's, it's got 12,000 seat capacity. <coughs> okay, so that's kind of your base template that we always communicate that for a basketball game, when the Summit League is in that building, um, and it's Terry's job to make sure that that gets filled. Um, for the basketball setup, our expectation is that it holds 12,000 seats. Now for hockey, um, the hockey floor is larger than a basketball floor. So you start to lose some of those seats that are adjacent to the basketball floor. So that's when you, um, you'll lose some of that number. And, and then if you were to um, do, say, a center stage concert, you can actually use the floor to uh, sell more seats. So that's when you start to approach that 13,000. So, um, you know, whether it's a banquet, a hockey game, um, um, or a center stage concert, all those can vary based on the configuration of what the tenants ask for. But the baseline for this facility is 12,000 for basketball. But uh, in the past, this has been a, a while ago, hmm? it was. Uh, promoted as, well, 12,000 base, and then expandable to 15,000 in the future if need be. Is that still, once again? I'm sorry, I didn't ask, answer your second part of your question. Um, it is expandable, and one of the strategies that we worked on early with Sink Homes and Mortensen is the natural expandable area would be on the area, the, the side that's connected to the convention center. Okay. And so one of the things that we've done, and because we've seen this happen in other city facilities, um, you know, 25 years down the road, you go, oh, boy, I'd sure like to add another floor on. And then we find out that the footing system wasn't strong enough for it. And so we wanted to make sure that if someone makes that decision uh, 25 years down the road, that the footing system here is set up to expand. And so the footing system that's on the east end of this facility, the, the side that's adjacent to the convention center has been set up to accommodate the additional load. And um, I never said 15,000. I think my estimate is it's closer to like 1,800 to 2,000 seats that we could obtain by essentially filling in the end of the horseshoe. Okay. So um, the lower bowl is a 360 degree bowl and then the upper bowl is a horseshoe and the expansion would be to fill in the horseshoe. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you. Thanks. Nobody else has questions. I guess I have one or two. We did do, do the uh, tour the other day, and I have to say there isn't a bad seat in that place. We got to walk around the whole place, and it's so vertical. I mean, wherever you are, you're, you're on top of the action. It's going to be a fantastic um, venue for our city. That being said, our next update is going to be March 25th, and by the time we get to March 25th, we'll probably be within six months of opening. And I'm just curious, and this might be a Terry question, when are we going to see a calendar? When are we going to start hearing about who's coming? And I'm not asking who's coming. I'm just, when are we going to start hearing this? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the you know, $100,000 question. Um, uh, obviously, one was announced recently that it's coming to Sioux Falls. Uh, and that's Jason Aldean. Um, that was due to something that happened on a national television program and some information that got out that wasn't supposed to. So that happens from time to time. But uh, that's not our first show. So as these happen, we'll, we will start to announce and we'll, we'll kind of try to line them up. You don't want to do them all at once because if you do, then you're, you're piling the, the costs on the, the users of the facility at one time. So we'll, we'll try and spread them out. But um, you know, a lot of it has to do with what the promoter wants and, and how we get them to work together to, to make announcements. But, uh, we do have one, you know, one that we know is coming to Sioux Falls that would fit nicely in that building. So, okay. 
will there be anything before the March 25th date released? Um, there, yeah, we'll have we'll have things probably coming out fairly soon. But I, I you know, once again, we're working with the promoters and the on the time and the I agents understand. and timing and yeah, just to make sure we do it right. Thank you. Yep. Other questions. All righty, that is the um, last item on our agenda today. Anybody else have anything they want to add? Okay, we do have a 5 o'clock uh, joint meeting with the Minnehaha County Commission, so that meeting will commence in about 25 minutes. Until then, meeting adjourned. <laughs>